As we increase the cargo pump speed to full discharge rate, the speed controller should be operated to increase in steps of 100 RPM initially, followed by smaller steps until the required discharge pressure or flow rate is reached. As the rate increases, the greater speed of flow causes more friction in pipelines, causing the pump suction pressure to fall. Until the required rate or manifold pressure is reached, continuous monitoring for cargo leaks should be carried out. This includes all areas of the cargo discharge pipeline arrangement, including manifold connections and offshore manifold blanks. The pump room cargo piping and pumps must also be carefully checked for cargo leaks, particularly from mechanical seals. If the inert gas flow is restricted for any reason during the speeding up of cargo pumps, increasing the flow rate might result in the cargo tank atmospheric pressure falling below the minimum required pressure. There are a number of situations where pumps should be slowed down gradually and stopped. These include situations where there are cargo leaks from pipelines or pumps or when there is a failure or defect in the inert gas plant that cannot be dealt with immediately. Other situations include emergencies, such as a fire or parting of mooring lines, if there is lightning nearby or there are wind or squall conditions where there is a risk of mooring failure. Once the cargo pump speeds are steady and the required pumping manifold pressure or cargo rate is being met in accordance with the terminal or charter party requirements, the manifold pressure might fall slightly as the discharge continues. This is because the static discharge head reduces as the tank level falls, causing total discharge pressure to reduce. Unless the cargo pumps are operating at full speed, you will need to regularly increase the revolutions on each pump slightly in order to maintain the pumping performance required. As the bulk pumping continues, the pump suction pressure will decrease due to the falling tank levels, as seen by the increasing ullage. In fact, the pump suction pressure will decrease until it is negative. When the tank level is near to stripping level and the pump suction pressure gets too low, pump cavitation can occur. This is caused by the formation and subsequent collapse of vapor bubbles in a pump, which can damage the pump impeller and other pump components. This must be avoided by gradually reducing the pump's rotational speed as the cargo approaches stripping level and eventually stopping one or two of the cargo pumps if three are running. If you see slight movements of the pump tachometer gauge needle or the suction or discharge pressure gauge needles, these may be the first indication of the start of pump cavitation. The pump speed should then be reduced as much as necessary until steady pumping conditions are resumed. The pump suction pressure gauges must be monitored extremely closely at this stage and the pump revolutions must be reduced until the cargo tanks reach stripping levels. At this time, the main cargo pumps should be stopped or operated with a vacuum stripping system.